The all new Glock 44 coming up. Hey guys, I'm Johnny with PewPewTactical.com, your definitive source for gun reviews, gear guides, and all things in the bang department. Today's gonna be all about the Glock 44 chambered in the legendary 22 long rifle. We got one, I'm gonna tell you all about it. I'll get it out to the range and hopefully help you decide if you need to add some more rim fire to your life. If it's your first time here, we always put a ton of stuff down below for you to check out, including a link that goes over to our website. My opinion is our website is spectacular. Check it out and see what you think. So for several months, the internet has been chattering about what the 44th Glock was gonna be. A lot of folks, including this guy, thought that it was going to be a carbine, and it turned out to be a 22 pistol that looks identical to the Glock 19. Glock had a huge release event down in Georgia a few weeks back that we got invited to. My editor went and had a blast with the gun. And since then, there's been a boatload of talk on the internet, and the online consensus is that the new Glock is underwhelming. So my editor sent me one to check out for myself so I can make up my own opinion and it's exactly what you would expect from Glock. It's a striker fired polymer framed Austrian engineered semi-automatic pistol and it's chambered in 22 long rifle. The only difference is that it's a blowback design. What it comes with is just like all the other Glocks, a hard plastic box with paperwork and a bunch of back straps to choose from and two magazines instead of the usual three like the Gen 5s. And those two magazines hold 10 rounds. Yep, you heard that right, 10 whole rounds. Overall, it is precisely the size of a Glock 19, which is half a spaghetti squash in size. The controls are the same as a Glock 19. It really will feel familiar in your hands on day one. For me, the weirdest thing is how light it is. Mine weighs unloaded about three quarters of a pound. Even loaded, it's just about a pound, maybe a little over. MSRP is $430, but as of the filming of this video, we don't really know the street price yet, but it's probably going to be around $360. And there's going to be an option for a threaded barrel that should be around $150. All right, let's get out to the range. For this test, my goal was to get the absolute most ammo down the pipe that I could. I took it out of the box and I let it rip. My goal on day one was a thousand rounds, but those 10 round magazines, they got in the way and my thumbs pooped out after 700 rounds. Now let's talk about those 10 round mags. They're light, like crazy light, and I'm not really sure, but to my hands, the plastic feels lighter than a regular Glock. The sides have these little small plastic discs that you pull down that help you load. These things are what ate up my thumbs by about round 500, but I do like the setup and it makes loading a breeze. And there's an indicator that shows you when the mag is full, just in case you can't look through the side of the open magazine and see for yourself. The sights are standard fare, a dot up front and a white box in the back. And as far as accuracy, I had zero problems. Y'all know I like to ping torso steel and I put rounds right where I wanted them. The gun is accurate, I can say that definitively. I only went out to about 50 yards though because I couldn't hear the steel ring any further out with that little 22 round. But at the release event, my editor took it out to 100 rounds consistently and I have seen the documentation on that. Now here's where it gets interesting. They did at the release event 10,000 rounds through the test pistols and only at the end did they start getting some reliability issues. The feed ramps were literally caked with carbon. Here's a pic of a feed ramp after 10,000 rounds. That's carbon chunk missing from the caked on blackness. And that's the big talk on this gun. It's the reliability. And because of that, my editor told me to run the gamut in ammo and that I did. I shot Federal, Winchester, Remington, a box of Browning literally from the 90s, mini mag, and a boatload of Walmart Thunderbolt. And with the cheap stuff, I did have problems. Consistent failure to eject and stovepipes. And that was all with the cheaper ammo. But with the hot ammo like the CCI mini mag, zero problem, the gun runs great. 
Now, I don't think I'm ever gonna conceal carry this gun, but for back and forth to the range, I was able to use my hidden hybrid holster for the Glock 19. It fits great, but keep in mind that the slide spring on the new gun is light and you may want to adjust your tension accordingly. Now, to be honest, I went into this test a little bit cynical. That's eh, my attitude, it's a 22. what are you gonna do? But after a few mags, I started having fun. The gun is literally the smoothest and the lightest shooting semi-automatic pistol that I have ever fired. You stay on target with zero effort, and for me, that translates to fun. Let me tell you what I like. First, again, it's fun to shoot. I didn't shoot enough rim fire in the last few years and it reminds me of being a kid so it gets me back in the groove of the 22 LOL. Now second, I do like the price of ammo, it's cheap to feed and if the street price on the gun comes in in the mid 300s, I'm going to be happy there as well. A full day at the range and you don't break the bank. Third, the maintenance on this one's gonna be super easy, just like all the other Glocks. I have other 22 pistols that are a nightmare to field strip. The 44, it does run a little dirty, but when it's time to clean, you won't cuss field stripping it. Three shortcomings I do want you to consider. First, the threaded barrel is gonna have metric threads. You half by 28 guys, you're gonna have to have an adapter. Second, those 10 round magazines. Before we all start typing down below, keep in mind that double stacking rimmed cartridges is a nightmare for the engineers, but holy moly, I need bigger magazines. We'll see which aftermarket manufacturers step up to the plate, but I need a hundred rounder. And finally, and this is the big one, it's the reliability issue. There's already a lot of talk online about this, but let me give you my official stance on the reliability of the Glock 44 again. I struggled with the rounds that were cheaper and lighter, but I didn't struggle with the hot stuff or the good stuff. So the gun runs and it runs great, but with an asterisk, you gotta fire the hot ammo. The two that work best for us, the ones that we're recommending to you, first of course is the CCI Mini Mag and also Blazer. Now take note of this, Blazer is what Glock brought to the event down in Georgia and down there it ran great. Now I have a question, why did Glock spend three years of R&D on this gun? A lot of folks are saying that the 44 is going to be perfect for training, especially for kids and women. Now my opinion is the Glock 19 frame is a little bit too big for really small hands to learn on and that whole attitude of here little lady go shoot a 22, well that's patronizing and it makes me feel like it's 1953. I do think it's great for brand new shooters to get to learn the Glock platform on the 22 rifle caliber, just my opinion. But here's my question of the day for all y'all, how would you use a 22 Glock? maybe on the range for fun or maybe training? Or how about throwing on a light onto that plastic rail and have a varmint gun that gives the varmint a fighting chance? Let us know what you think right down below. We'll read every comment. Overall, I really did have some surprising fun with the new Glock 44. If you load up on hot ammo, I think you're gonna have fun as well. On behalf of the entire Pew Pew Tactical team, I'm Johnny and we'll see you soon.